What's going on guys? It's Kyle. Welcome to the Stockout YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the SoFi stock. We're going to be looking at some, you know, valuations. We're going to be taking a look at a new article. We're going to be going over some options I just bought. Tons and tons of crazy things are happening right now inside of the market. The market is absolutely exploding. SoFi really did have a quiet day today, but I just listened to the, you know, Facebook earnings that came out. They were solid. This is good news, you know, for the overall market. Tesla's earnings are starting to pay off. That company is exploding now after the earnings have came out and, you know, people are now able to absorb the earnings. And I believe we're setting up for a massive move inside of 2022 for the SoFi stock. So patience will continue to pay off for this one, just like I've been saying, but the fundamentals are definitely there. And only if this video gives you a better insight on the SoFi stock, the overall market direction, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to smash the like button. Let's try and get this video past 1,000 likes. And please drop a comment if you're investing in the SoFi stock around these price ranges. And what is your price target for 2022? Let's get into the video. All right, guys, taking a look at the SoFi stock, we can see we finished the day up 0.49%. The S&P 500 green, Dow green, NASDAQ green, Russell green. All of the indexes were green. The market just absolutely exploded today. It was absolutely crazy. EV, uh, the car companies just went absolutely insane. Anything related to Bitcoin, insane. All the IPOs bounced back. The market was crazy overall. I mean, just take a look at some of these moves today. Coinbase, 8%. Moderna, 6%. Cloudflare, 4 Affirm, 3 Upstart, 5 Etsy, Fastly, PayPal, everything, 3%. Peloton, Chewy, Square, the market absolutely exploded today. It was absolutely crazy. It's just SoFi was one of those stocks that had a quiet day. And this is completely fine because the fundamentals have not changed. This article just came out today. Three underperforming fintech stocks to scoop up while you can. But what I really like in this article is he explains, you know, the comparisons of the valuations from the banks and the fintechs. Take a look. This is very important. Fintech stocks have a way of becoming a battleground among investors. Many investors likely struggle to justify the high valuations that can accompany these stocks. Too often, they compare fintech stocks to traditional banks. They do this time and time again on CNBC, and it just does not correlate because of the growth. Not only do traditional banks tend to come with lower valuations, but they usually come with much lower growth, guys. This is the key to why you should not be buying bank stocks anymore. The growth is not there. With the latest dip in the stock market in particular and growth stocks, let's look at these three fintech stocks we're scooping up on the decline. And we're just gonna take a look at SoFi. The stock has seen its shortage of volatility falling more than 50% from its high in February to its low in August. However, some of that volatility shows just how much upside potential could be here. Analysts currently expect just under $1 billion in revenue this year and for almost $1.5 billion in sales next year. In 2023, consensus estimates sit at $2.1 billion in sales if SoFi can deliver. This is significant growth. Hoping to achieve its lofty growth expectations, which calls for revenue for almost $3.7 billion in 2025, they also see adjusted EBITDA hitting almost $1.2 billion by 2025. I mean, this can go even higher with a bank charter approval. So guys, massive growth is projected inside of the SoFi stock. And the valuations right now, they really do make sense. And I'm going to prove that to you later on in this video when we look at other technology valuations. So guys, if we look at the largest American companies by market capitalization, okay, we know that there is some massive companies you know, that have been around for a long time inside of the stock market. But these new technology fintech companies are absolutely exploding. I mean, the technology valuations are getting absolutely insane. And I'm telling you right now, SoFi is not getting that crazy valuation like these other tech stocks. Snowflake is currently the 87th largest company in America with 102 billion market cap, guys. Understand, Snowflake does the exact same revenue as SoFi right now, right around, you know, 100% growth. They are valued at 100x sales, guys. We are valued around 17x sales right now. That is massive. That is almost 600% higher valuation on a price to sales multiple. I'm not even saying SoFi is going anywhere close to, you know, Snowflake's 100x valuation. I mean, that is absolutely insane. I'm going to get into a more realistic valuation for you because Snowflake is so overvalued, it's absolutely insane how they could even let an IPO go to market at this market cap. If we just go over to page two for largest American companies by market capitalization, 
two companies really stand out to me as a great comparison to where we could value SoFi at, okay? The reason why is because these two companies have two things. One, they are technology companies, and two, they are high, high growth uh, companies, okay? Fast, fast growth. And those companies right now are a Cloudflare and a firm, okay? These are brand new companies, you know, to the market. I believe Cloudflare is, you know, right around two years. A firm is right around a year plus. So these are brand new companies, you know, to the, you know, stock exchange. And guys, these valuations are ridiculous right now. So understand, these companies are 147th ranked largest and 199th largest right now. The market right now has SoFi ranked at 491. That is absolutely insane because in my opinion, we should be higher than those two companies that I just showed you guys. So when I talk about upside potential from where we're valued at right now, we have massive, massive room to run inside of 2022. And the best part about it is our massive catalysts have not even happened yet with a bank charter approval and also, you know, getting our student loans back, which is nearly, you know, $100 million revenue plus. So I believe when they lay out that 2022 guidance, just like a firm did, we are going to get a massive surge of, you know, new institutional buyers because they're going to have confirmation that this stock has massive room to run. Remember guys, Morgan Stanley called SoFi the fastest growth story in consumer finance, guys. That is the craziest statement I've ever seen. And we are not priced right now like the fastest growing company in consumer finance right now, okay? We are priced like absolute, you know, boo-boo right now. We're behind AMC in market cap valuation right now, behind AMC. This does not make sense to me, guys. And I'm telling you right now, we are going to surpass Cloudflare and we will also surpass Affirm. I really believe that this is going to happen by the end of next year, but I'm telling you, when it happens, it is going to happen fast. We're going to surpass those two companies in the near future. As you can see right here, SoFi, $16 billion market cap. Affirm, $45 billion market cap. Cloudflare, $60 billion market cap. So guys, check this out. SoFi right now, they do more revenue than both of those you know, tech companies. And on top of that, they have faster growth than those two companies that I just showed you. So higher revenue and higher growth, and even a faster time to profitability, guys. Our valuation should be higher than these companies right now. The market is just not priced that way yet because SoFi has to drop some massive catalyst to confirm that the growth will be there for the next couple of years, especially in 2022. To get to a firm's market cap of $45 billion, we're going to take a look at the Omni calculator, the market capitalization, guys, and take a look at this. We have about 799 million outstanding shares for the SoFi stock. To get to that market cap, we would have to be at a stock price of $57 to surpass a firm's valuation right now, guys. And on top of that, we deserve this type of market cap because we're doing more revenue than a firm and higher growth. And I understand a firm has dropped some amazing news with the Target and the Amazon partnership, but we're going to have better news heading our way with a bank charter approval, guys. I mean, this is going to give us so much leeway, not have to go through these third parties, and it's going to give us a lot of control on lending. To get to the market capitalization of $60 billion plus like Cloudflare, SoFi would have to be priced at $77 right now. These valuations that these companies are getting are absolutely insane. I mean, Cloudflare does like $600 million in revenue. So, so as you can see right now, SoFi has massive room to run, guys. And I'm going to continue to stick to my personal price target that I've been telling you in the past, you know, five to 10 videos that SoFi deserves a $55 price target, guys. If we do $2 billion in revenue next year, we're going to be priced around 20x sales. This is very, very, you know, honest, you know, valuation when we talk about the growth rate, which SoFi has. So I believe we're going to pass those two companies up in the future, but also we're going to see a $55 price target for 2022. And guys, the numbers are there. You know, I can add another two companies on like Shopify, which is priced at 41X sales. And I can even find another one for you. These are the valuations that technology is being priced at. And SoFi has not got that yet because they have to wait to drop the massive news with the bank charter and also 2022 guidance once the student loans come back to life. And also, guys, we're going to see much better earnings, okay? I have the earnings report pulled up for you right now. And if we take a look at June and we scroll down a little bit, EPS was negative 48 cents a miss. 
This is because we had massive one-time expenses. If we go over to NASDAQ and look at you know where they see SoFi headed for this next earnings report, it looks like we should see anywhere from negative four cents to negative 13 cents, you know, EPS forecast. Okay. And that's going to be a massive jump, you know, from what investors saw from the last earnings report with that, you know, um, one time chart. We're in the four cent, you know, to 13 cent uh, loss range should be solid. And anyone new to the channel right now, you know, I have about, you know, three different accounts with SoFi stock in it. I have over a six figure position. I'm very bullish on the company and I'm not really worried about, you know, short term movements. You know, I will be holding this stock for the next five years, but I did decide to buy a portion in options. OK, and anyone buying options, guys, I continue to tell people if they want to be safe and diversifying their money while also taking, you know, some high risk plays, you should never buy, you know, over, you know, 20 percent of your you know investment inside of options. OK, you should always have at least 80 percent inside of the stock. 20% should be the max inside of the options, okay? If you have 10,000, you know, it might be all right to put 2,000 in some options, 8,000 in the stock, and so forth. So guys, take a look at all these different options we have. You know, we have Octobers, Novembers, uh, Decembers, Januaries, and then we have some leaps inside of 2023 and 24. Um, you know, the high risk is, of course, going to be anything in November, you know, playing around the earnings on November 10th. These are the high risk options, high risk, high reward, you know, but if SoFi does not drop any bank charter news, you know, the stock could potentially just sit there even if they have a, you know, decent earnings. So we really want to get that bank charter news inside of our options. But I do think, you know, earnings could accelerate this stock. It might not happen right away that day because the shorts might try to, you know, manipulate and fool people into getting, you know, those options to expire worthless. And then we might see, you know, two, three days later, you know, the stock really ramp up if the earnings are strong with guidance. That's exactly what just happened for Tesla. You know, the stock didn't really do anything the day of earnings and then it bounced back, you know, two, three days later. So anything in the November is high risk and anything in 2023, 2024 is extremely safe buying the leaps. So I actually just went with the March 18th, 2022 call. You know, I could have went with the April, but I decided to buy some March 18th calls. And, you know, I really like these calls. You know, they have the, you know, Super Bowl inside of it. They have another, you know, two earnings reports. Uh, I, I like this call a lot. And I believe the bank charter approval should be priced in, you know, before March 18th. And you can see right here, I bought the 22.5 calls. You know, the break even is around $25. Uh, so, so I really think this is a good call over the next five months. And if this stock does move into the, you know, $35 plus range, we're going to be seeing, you know, some massive gains on those calls. But once again, guys, I do not recommend anyone to go all in on options. Like I said, you know, 10 to 20 percent of your, you know, a position you want to make inside of the stock that is completely fine. And that's exactly what I did. You guys can see right here. I have over a one hundred thousand dollar position amongst my accounts. And you can see, you know, I put it like four percent of my overall position inside of the option. You know, I want to have a little bit of fun. You know, I want to, you know, take some risk and, you know, about a $4,000 position right now. These are down about 2%, but you know, I like this call over the next five months. I think this is going to be a really good call. And like I said, high risk, November, you know, uh, medium to moderate risk is what I took, you know, the March to April's. And then if you really want to go safe, just buy the leap. So we're going to see how these play out. You know, I'll probably end up holding these, you know, until Super Bowl next year. Uh, around February, SoFi will be hosting the Super Bowl. And, you know, there could be a lot of breaking news happening. You know, we could definitely get that bank charter and we could also get some, you know, acquisitions in the future. So if this stock does ramp up to these price targets that I'm talking about of $55, you know, towards the end of the year, you're going to be making a lot of money, guys. And if you made it to the end of the video, I want to say I really do appreciate it. I enjoy doing these SoFi videos for you. I believe SoFi is going to be one of the best investments for 2022. All you need to have is patience. And if you want to take a little bit of gamble on those options, you know, just keep your position size, you know, to 10 to 15 percent. Maybe don't go all in on options and you will be completely fine. Remember to buy that stock and hold that stock for the long term. It will pay off drastically. Once again, my name is Kyle. Hope you have a great day.